everyone. Heather Holmes here with KTV Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me this afternoon is Dr. Rashid Chitani. He is an infectious disease expert and medical officer with IEM, someone that we've been talking to since the beginning of this pandemic. And thank you so much, doctor, for joining us once again. So thank you for having me, Heather, for, to talk about such an important subject. Uh, and we've been talking about it for months now. Yeah, we certainly have. Here we are in the new year, doctor. I know that you're spending some time in Texas helping with the COVID-19 response there. Uh, tell us a little bit about the situation in Texas. Like uh, the entire nation, uh, like California, Texas is also facing a major, major crisis in terms of COVID-19. Uh, I'm in Austin right now, and uh, some of the data and, 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 and uh, hospital information that is coming out is telling us that by April, uh, sorry, by January 15th, uh, there won't be any hospital beds available. Uh, you know, across the nation, uh, EMS, when it goes out, at some point we'll have to decide whether to take an individual who's critically ill to a hospital or not, depending upon if there's uh, space in the hospital. So we are in, 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 in a very, very bad situation across the nation. And the same thing is happening in, in Texas. Uh, across Texas, uh, the numbers have gone up. Uh, the hospitals are packed and the deaths are just uh, climbing every single day. And, and doctor, though, they are trying to get more availability, more hospital av availability. Um, yes. Can you talk a little bit about what, what's going on there and how the process is moving along? So the Texas uh, uh, Department uh, Division of Emergency Ma Medicine, TEDM, is, uh, and, and all the other agencies are working very hard across the state to make sure that whatever they can do in terms of saving lives is being done, such as uh, you know, if there are hospitals that, have, uh, that, that are vacant right now or closed and they can, uh, they, they can use them as floating hospitals, uh, they, will, they will make sure that they can convert them into COVID, uh, uh, COVID hospitals. Uh, the state uh, has a, a decent amount of uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies for the treatment of COVID-19, like all the other states across the nation. So what, uh, uh, what, what Texas is doing is saying, okay, uh, can, 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 can you come and help us uh, set up uh, infusion centers uh, for patients who have COVID-19, who've been diagnosed with COVID-19, who are of a certain age of high risk, uh, have comorbidities, and, and we can do the treatment for them, and then they can go home and potentially not have to show up at the hospital uh, and not occupy a hospital bed, not occupy an ICU bed, and ultimately, if possible, and that's the objective, is to decrease the deaths and, and survive this thing and, and make it through this uh, uh, COVID problem. Uh, doctor, do you do you believe that these infusion centers are something that more cities and states might be looking at? I think uh, the infusion centers are are uh, very important at this point. Uh, we have two FDA approved, emergency authorization approved uh, uh, drugs that are available, uh, and they have they have been distributed across the different states uh, equitably, and they are sitting there. Uh, so yes, we need to start using that drug to actually decrease whatever we can in terms of the burden of disease, right? Uh, so if we can save 10 lives, right? Isn't that better than not saving any lives? But I believe that with the use of monoclonal antibodies, uh, with this therapy, we can save a lot of lives. Uh, and, and the process is not really very long. So a patient comes in, uh, who has been uh, identified based upon the criteria that CDC, FDA, et cetera, have identified already. And, and, and then uh, they get an infusion for one hour. Uh, after that, they, they're observed for one hour and then they can go home. That's it. It's, it the treatment is done. Uh, you know, there's, it, the, the drug has shown to be very effective. Uh, there is very little side of, there are very little side effects, uh, some minor side effects, but you know, you're observing them for one hour or after the treatment and, and making sure that they're uh, going out healthy from uh, the facility you're treating them in. And now with, uh, uh, with the relaxation uh, that FDA has provided for monoclonal antibodies, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to use a hospital or a clinic to do it. You can actually have a freestanding facility with the proper equipment and proper, you know, all the things that are needed. And you can actually set up a tent or a, or a mobile unit and be able to, uh, you know, have infusion for these people. So, so again, this stops people from going to the hospital. This stops people from being admitted to the hospital. So I think it's a very good thing.
do you do you have any idea of how effective or what type of impact these infusion centers might have on our fight in this ongoing pandemic? So I believe that uh, these the drug is, uh, has shown to be very effective and uh, in moderate, mild, and moderate disease. And and what what we are trying to do is to use this drug to make sure that the mild and moderate disease patients who might recover by themselves without any kind of treatment or therapy do not fo fall into that category that they have to go to the hospital, right? So there are certain people who stay home with mild disease or moderate disease that sometimes they get really sick and then they are moved to the hospital. So what CDC has done is said, okay, if you've got people who are 65 years and over, over I'm just giving you an example, uh, and, and if they have hypertension, diabetes, heart disease and all that, make sure that they are getting the monoclonal antibody. So make sure that we are decreasing the risk of you know, having them come to the hospital very, very sick, and then we have to intubate, intubate them. So, so that is what we are trying to do. Uh, so, so the jury is out in terms of what is the exact number of people that we will save by using this therapy, total number of people, or uh, how are we gonna decrease the hospitalization? But it is uh, agreed upon uh, you know, across the medical uh, field that using this drug is safe, uh, using this drug will definitely decrease morbidity as well as mortality. Okay, doctor, I wanna move on um, and talk about the vaccination rollout. Obviously a lot of hopes riding on the vaccines, but, but there is also some frustration about how the vaccine has been rolled out. Can you explain a little bit about the process and, and, and what's actually taking place right now? So, uh, so I'm working with uh, the state of Illinois on the vaccine distribution and we are doing, uh, uh, you know, our team is doing a great job in terms of uh, making sure that uh, uh, everything is being done properly. Uh, I, I believe one of the problems that we had was our expectations were too high. And when you have high expectations, what happens is that when you have a product out, you think that you're going get to get it immediately and, and everything is going to be okay. Now, people talk about the expectations and, and uh, not being able to get the vaccine quick enough. But you know, one of the problems that we have been facing, and I'm not kidding, across the nation, and I've talked to my colleagues, there are a lot of people who, healthcare, even healthcare providers who do not want to get vaccinated. Uh, and and, and, and there's, a, there's an issue and historical problem in the minorities uh, that uh, uh, have a trust issue with the vaccine and, and they uh, you know, don't want to get the vaccine. Uh, so it's not just that the supply is not there. First of all, one has to realize that this is the first time in the history of the United States we are doing such an exercise. Number two, we have to realize that we have to do it very carefully. We cannot just go out and vaccinate every single person uh, with every vaccine while that we have. We've got to make sure that the same person who's vaccinated uh, gets the first dose, has a second dose available for them. So, we've, you know, so, so that restricts things. Uh, you know, the Operation Warp Speed has already said that, you know, yes, you know, initially they thought that they were going to, uh, uh, you know, dispense all this and, and it will go smoothly, but it has taken some time because of some Problem, logistical problems that they did not anticipate. So we're still learning through the process, right? Actually, we are building a plane while we are flying it. So, uh, you know, and this is something that we've never done before. COVID has never been here before, right? So, so we have to give people a chance and opportunity to do this the right way. UK has said, we are going to just vaccinate. We are just going to give one shot, right? Uh, because we'll use the maximum amount of vaccine that we've got to immunize the maximum amount of people. But in the United States, we follow the data and the science. And the data and the science says that you've got to get two shots of Moderna as well as the, uh, the Pfizer vaccine. So we've got to follow the science and it's gonna take time. And you know, we've talked about it previously. This is not something that's gonna resolve in a day. It, it is gonna take a very long time for us to get to the end point. You know that uh, you know, if, uh, you know, by the end of March, there's very little chance that we will be able to vaccinate more than 75 million people. In order for us to develop herd immunity, we've got to vaccinate 300 million people. So we still have a huge gap in March. And, and, and uh, in March, we hope, I'm hoping that three other new vaccines are gonna come out. And that is gonna fill that gap very quickly. But during this time, we've got to be careful and cautious as we move and, and live with COVID. And, and I know that here in California, uh, the, the, the governor is pumping in a lot more money to try to streamline the process. 
what do you see as helping to, to get more people vaccinated? I mean, you mentioned some of the logistical problems. Is it logistics? Is it that there aren't enough people to actually administer it? Is it the fact that there's not enough of the vaccine or is it kind of a combination of all of those things? It's the combination of all of those things, right? Uh, and it's a very, very valid point that you raised. I mean, is it that uh, we, we don't have enough vaccine? Yes, we don't have enough vaccine. That's, let's, let's face it, right? Uh, we have, a, we have a, 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 you know, we have finite, we have, we have a limited amount of vaccine right now. Uh, then we uh, have some logistical issues uh, with the vaccine because of the temperature that it has to be kept on, right? Uh, then we've got resources that were never there for the public health uh, folks uh, that had to be stood up again. And, and so uh, everything combined together culminated to this huge problem uh, that uh, we were not able to, as a nation, meet the expectations uh, that everybody had from us, uh, knowing that there was a vaccine. Now, you know, we've all talked about it, all the experts, and I've also, all, always talked about it, having a vaccine uh, and getting FDA approval is, is not where you want to be happy. You want to be happy when you get the vaccine yourself. That is the day that you've got to be happy. So you got, and there's a long line you know, we've got to vaccinate 300 million people. It's, uh, it's going to take some time and, 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 the, and mistakes are going to happen. Uh, and, and we learn from our mistakes and, and, and do a better job as we move forward. So everybody's got to be patient, uh, but patient and careful uh, so that we can continue to live and our families live and our loved ones survive this thing. Yeah, that, that is really the, the important message here. Well, Dr. Rashid Chotani, really appreciate it. Thank you so much and, and safe travels. Thank you so much and uh, always good talking to you. Bye-bye.